Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting hard surface episode oh, inside yes. of Maya. So um, I had a question asked to me by some unknown entity um, about some hard surface stuff and what to do in terms of adding supporting edges. So we've covered a few of these things before in terms of curved surfaces. There will be a little hidden hidden bonus over here with uh, so exciting. with curved surfaces, but we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. So essentially, let's smooth this. So this is supposed to represent a car door. So imagine this is this is where the car door goes down. And you usually have a split of the front part of the car to this little, I don't know. Car part. Car bumper that's underneath the car. And then this would be the door itself. Right? So the question is, how do we make this part here um, super crisp? So the question that was asked to me was like, okay, so if I just add a loop here, say I add a loop there and we subdivide it, you can see we get kind of the way there. Yeah. And let's assume that this is our limit. Like um, we want the car door to flow in a certain way and we can't actually add more uh, vertical loops to it. So how do we get around that problem? Now, this is where triangles uh, comes into play. But Morton, aren't the tri triangles the most evil thing in the world? Yes, they are the most evil thing in the world and you can never touch them. Mm. Uh, that's not true. So let's say we wanted to, to smooth this off. It's like to get a smooth surface. Cause like, so when you're doing car modeling and I've done my fair f bit of car modeling. I hate that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not a fan of it either, but it did, it did teach me a lot of really good valuable things. So, I mean, basically the less you can get away with the better because making an even car surface or surface for a car when you have a reflective surface can be really tricky. Yeah. So the fewer loops you have going across and up, the the easier it's gonna be for you. So my solution for something like this to getting a really nice and crisp edge here is to do with a triangle. Um, what I would do is, uh, so this edge over here is already, uh, um, is already it's already a supporting edge, right? Because you can see we have one edge here and another edge that goes across here. So what we could do is just add a loop up that goes up there. Let's see, we get it close enough. And then we would just move this all the way over here. Now, the problem is, like we talked about before, maybe we can't do this. Mm. Maybe we can't add more loops. Maybe we have restrictions for some. You for have some a curved reason. surface, and by adding stuff like this, it, yeah. everything just goes yeah, that's crazy. Exactly. That's a really good example. Maybe you have already have a curved surface that goes like this way. Yeah. Um, so if it, if, it, if it were to curve this way, if you add a supporting loop up here, now you're going to have to fiddle with the surface to get everything yeah. to flow nicely. Again. And it could also just pinch like crazy. Yeah. So... The, what I would propose for um, a solution here is just to do this. You take that edge, you delete it from up there, and then you just merge that into here. Now, once you subdivide, we have a really nice hard edge. But evil triangles, Morton. But evil triangles, but it doesn't actually matter. No. Because what the triangle does here is only serve as a supporting edge around this area. Mm. It doesn't actually go up and affect our, our area up here, which is, is the curved area, right? So you can see that here. Now, one thing I would try to do to minimize how much the triangle, because you can see the triangle does go up here to yeah. affect something. It's stretched a lot now. Yeah, what I would do is, first of all, I would add maybe another loop that goes across here, but we can do that in like a little bit of a hacky way. So I would do- Multi-cut time? And... Multi-cut time, yeah. So I'd probably add a loop here. Now I'm not gonna complete this all the way. I'll just, I'll just end it, let's just end it there. And then I would merge these two together. And now you can see we still retain our triangle, mm. which has the supporting uh, edge close to here. So once we subdivide, we still have our really nice and crisp edge, yeah. but without sacrificing any sort of weird stuff. And we minimize, you see where the triangle is stretching up to, we minimize that area quite a lot. Triangles are not the devil. They're, no, no. Uh, uh, there are there are sh there shorter ways of fixing this here, but triangles in this case they're fine. Yeah. So one thing we talked about is like, what if you want to quadify it mm. to make sure you have quads? Well, if you really want a quad, the easiest way would to be to do this. Ta -da. Now you have a quad, but nothing has changed. No. <laughs> Literally nothing has changed, um, except now you have more loops, right? So yeah. you don't necessarily want that. Another solution we talked about was you could add uh, another loop up here and then basically do that. I guess you could merge these and then delete that. Oh shit, we ended up with another triangle. Mm. 
Let's ignore that triangle up there. <laughs> but that's a solution you could do as well. Yeah. So it's actually a shit solution now. <laughs> it was good before. Yeah. You could go up here and add the loops up there, and that would solve that problem. Yeah. So let's We also you. make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes. So here is a curved example. Now, I know this is technically curving the wrong way, but let's actually... Do we have enough for this? Let's try it. Let's add another. So we just threw on a bend deformer onto this. Real the quick. bend deformer is one of these that we just talked about before recording now. Once you understand it, you can do amazing things with it. Yeah. But if you don't fully, it's a tricky one. Uh, maybe we'll do a tutorial on the bend deformer. Because that is a that is a tricky little thing to get right sometimes. Yeah. So let's uh, let's bend that like this. Okay. My god. Mastery go. of the bend deformer right here. And now we have a extremely curved surface here. Yeah, this is, is generally a, sur a surface which is tricky to, to wrestle around with a hard surface in Maya. Yeah. The issue here, now, th there's going to be a, a, there's going to be multiple issues here, is that, first of all, if you wanted a curved surface like this, let's say on a car, right, this part here is going to be straight now on the mm. bottom part. So you would obviously want to add more supporting loops to get this straight. But this is just to explain the example a little quicker. So, um, add a supporting loop here like we had before. Um, this this supporting loop, actually, let's undo this real quick because that supporting loop should technically be in place already. So let's pretend that we'd already modeled something that was super nice. Like this model here, which is <laughs> super nice. <laughs> yes, yes, it's uh, very, very nice. You know, I spent a long time on this. Mm, all of two, three minutes. Uh, so obviously, like what you would need is have these be spaced out kind of evenly, unlike this. <laughs> uh, this is not the ideal situation here. So let's do a bend deformer. What was that? Like something like that, I think. Rotate it. It's always so funny when you use the bend deformer. Yeah, it really is. It I took me embarrassed a long time to learn how to use it. <laughs> so there we go. So now we have that there. So we can see now we're ending up with that little edge there that we need. Again, for a more production ready uh, example, you would add more supporting yeah. loops, right? You don't want your subdivisions to take care of, of, um, of the, the loops. You want, you want to look the same yeah. in polygon mode as in subdivision mode. But here now, I'll be able to illustrate the example of like the issue that will arise. We can yeah. let's see. This is a this is a pretty nice and smooth surface here, right? Once you start to add supporting loops, obviously that surface is going to start to break. Mm, we don't patient. want that, and we don't want that. So what? You know, your solution could be to maybe take that and then do like edit edge flow or something to space it out. Cool. But now you have this and yeah. you, you want to minimize these things as much as possible with stretched uh, edges and stuff. So I would undo that again. There we go. And then simply just do what I did before. Just take this edge, delete the rest and merge this in here. Now. There we go. Now we'll have a pinched edge down here, which matches the example we had here. We can alleviate some of this. You see the little bit of pinching here because of the triangle. We can alleviate that by adding a supporting loop that runs across here, yeah. and that pretty much solves your problem. The issue is if you have a curved surface like this and you just simply can't add um, more supporting loops going either vertical yeah. or, or horizontal. Curved surfaces in, in subduction surfaces, it's just a tricky problem. Yeah. There isn't like a good way of dealing with these kind of things necessarily. There, there it's just it's just really hard. So we go. See, this is what happened there. Mm. <laughs> Let's edit edge flow is the best thing ever for certain things. Yeah, for certain things, it's really good. Like once you have uh, these kind of things where you have multiple loops next to each other, it's like it's like the math breaks down. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't quite. You destroyed the math. There we go. Something like that. Now we have a more even surface there, right? Yeah. So that would be how, you know that, <laughs> that would be probably how I would solve these kinds of issues. Yeah. I mean, the main takeaway from this is really don't worry about triangles too much. Yeah. If, if, if whatever you're doing calls for a triangle, then, you know, don't be afraid to throw in a triangle. And if you throw in triangles this way, I mean, it's easier to see over here. If you throw in triangles like this as supporting edges here and don't let them extend above where they need to be, triangles can be a massive help when yeah. you're modeling. 
Um, and something, I don't know, maybe we talked about that before. Once you subdivide, a triangle becomes a quad anyway. <laughs> Not that you should rely on that, but uh, but it but it's true. It, yeah, it, it does become a quad. Yeah. So yeah, this was just a little handy tip for not just modeling cars, I guess, but whatever you want to do. Hard nice surface little cuts. hard surface tutorial for you. Yeah. So if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.